Hello ladies and gentlemen, I am Dr. Claudia Albers, Planet X research and professional physicist. And today I'd like to bring to you another one of my articles. This one is entitled Increased Planet X Dust Entering Atmosphere and Creating Red Skies. Now figure one shows images of what the sky looks like over Jerusalem nowadays at sunrise and sunset. The images show red and yellow clouds. The clouds are red and yellow at the bottom and the colors are mixed so you can see red in between the yellow and uh, so these are not clouds that are being illuminated with this color these are clouds that are emitting these colors so these are luminescent clouds and luminescent clouds result from planet x system dust entering the earth's atmosphere planet x system um, is a system comprised of many star systems where all the stars have died and the planets and moons have died as well. In other words, they have become energy depleted. Energy depleted objects have low gravitational influence, which causes them to break up and shear their outer layers, which then turn into huge clouds of debris. They shear their outer layers until the core is exposed, which is why I have named them stellar cores. Dust is a huge part of this debris, but there will be larger irregular shaped pieces in it. Planet X system stellar cores come into the sun's corona and deposit large amounts of this debris there. The objects do not affect the orbits of the planets of the solar system because of their low gravitational influence as a result of being energy depleted. So they may seem small from Earth, but they are actually often much larger than the Sun. And here you see this one of these objects, you can see it's spherical, the stellar cores are spherical, but the debris pieces are not. You can see the huge cloud of debris that is surrounding this object. And this uh, was in a stereo HI1A image or a timestamp from January of 2013. As you can see the large debris field surrounding the object, huge pieces. And some of these debris pieces uh, seem to almost be in physical contact, but this one's actually slightly in front of the object. It's just traveling along towards the sun. And for more details, you may look at Article 424 entitled Large Planet X Object and Large Debris Field May Endanger Earth. Now, um, this object turned out to actually be much uh, larger than the Sun. That's how large these objects are because these are the cores of stars. And there are a lot of stars in the universe that are much larger than the Sun. So these must have been huge stars but now they are dead and all we see is the core and what's left of the outer layers which has become these pieces of debris. And for details on how I estimated the size of this object, you may look at article 425 entitled Incredibly Fast Object in Revealing HI1A Images Likely Larger Than the Sun. Now, here on the left is a Giotto spacecraft uh, image of Halley's Comet. So you can see it uh, has an irregular shape. So this is not a stellar core. It's a piece, one of the debris pieces from a stellar core. You can see large numbers here. Well, a few of these pieces in the sun's corona, they are surrounded by a cloud of plasma and they emit light from that cloud. You can see that here exactly the same as Halley's Comet, surrounded by a cloud because when they make contact with solar system matter they absorb energy from solar system matter and that leads to that cloud emitting light. But at the same time they break up, they continue to break up and issue large amounts of dust. So there will be a large dust cloud coming off the objects as well. So the debris pieces in the sun's corona can be compared with the sun in size because you can see the sun here. And the sun is huge. Uh, the sun is 109 times larger than the earth in radius. So these pieces are maybe just a little uh, smaller than the earth, but they are huge. These are huge pieces of debris because the objects are so large. Now, um, 
these objects all surrounding a cloud of material, which, as I said, emits light. And, uh, and this is due to the energy absorption process because they come from dead stars. So the material is low in energy. So in, when it makes contact with solar system material, which is high in energy, there's this transfer of energy from the high energy material to the low energy material. And that causes um, this emission of light. Now, this means that there is an exchange. The solar system gains low energy dust and the objects gain energy and gravitational influence. So over time, they will become more responsive to gravitational fields and will be attracted to the planets. Now, Halley's Comet is thus a large piece of debris which is in a 76-year-old orbit because Halley's Comet comes back about every 76 years. But most of the objects which have been coming in for thousands of years, especially those that come in for the first time, are huge stellar cores like the one seen in Figure 2 and surrounded by that huge cloud of debris. This object was larger than the Sun and was thus a dead star. Some of these objects remain in the sun's corona and some move on in some orbit, but they also usually leave large amounts of debris behind. Over thousands of years, the inner solar system has filled up with debris and it is now entering the Earth's atmosphere in larger and larger quantities, and thus giving rise to brightly colored luminescent clouds, as we saw in Figure 1. And you may look at Article 435 entitled Planet X Debris Filling the Solar System, Sun is Now a Dark Star. The reason why the red skies are not seen as much during the day and the night is because the sky simulation system is able to mask them. However, the huge quantity coming in may soon become impossible to mask, as the simulators are known to man malfunction when a particularly large quantity enters within a short amount of time. And this seems to have occurred in July of 2018 when the sky went dark in the middle of the day in northern Russia. And you may look at Article 291 entitled, The Sun Disappears, Day Turns Into Night. And these are some photographs from that time. As you can see, the sky looked reddish. Well, some people said it had a yellow undertone to it. That's a clear sign that this is stellar core dust entering the atmosphere, and the energy absorption process causes it to emit these colors of light. Notice that the sky didn't go completely dark, and that is because there always seems to be some material entering the atmosphere, so that even uh, when the sun simulators are not working, uh, there is a little bit of light in the sky, even at night. Um, this is not due to the sun, though, because uh, the sun was not shining. It hasn't been shining, most likely, for many years now. Now, the increased amount of stellar core dust entering the atmosphere may point to the Earth now being within the debris field of one or more um, larger stellar cores. These objects are weak gravitationally, but they remove the Earth's ionosphere and cause the Earth's surface to fissure as well as induce volcanic eruptions. In addition, if more than one of these objects approach the surface of the Earth, they may induce multiple electric earthquakes, which can turn into an ELE, extinction level event earthquake. And you may look at Article 445 entitled, Can Planet X Cause Devastatingly Large Earthquakes on Earth? For more details. In conclusion, there seems to be an increasing amount of planet X or stellar core dust or comet dust entering the Earth's atmosphere, which is leading to a dramatic increase in luminescent clouds in the sky. These are mainly seen at sunrise and sunset when the sky simulation system is changing from daytime to nighttime mo mode or vice versa and seems unable to mask uh, this dust. And those are the references. This is Dr. Claudia Alvers, Planet X physicist. Thank you for watching.